Hello everyone, Jacketing here. Welcome to US Air <laughs> Raceway, <laughs> Speedway, Motorway, whatever. We are here because your boy <laughs> is drifting S86. Uh, long story short, a lot has happened. My friends who used to work at TF, uh, John Kim, who is running Club FR, told me, hey, you should come out. We got a drift DD101 day, which is for regular slash intermediate beginners. And I was like, okay, that fits the bill. That, that might work pretty well for me. And so a mad dash to try and get the car ready ensued. So I'll walk you quickly through some of the changes that you have you haven't seen done to the 86 since we last saw it. Well, first off, we had to fix quite a lot of the things that apparently fell off. The tensioner was falling off. Uh, the timing, apparently the gears, both camp gears were one tooth off. So it was running like garbage. We have a new Koyorad radiator. It's now with actual water instead of coolant. Uh, a carbon strut bar, which is porn. I love it. I've been wanting one of these for like four, four years. Well, since I was like 14. So finally got that on the car. Interior, we still got my trusty old Sparco steering wheel. But in addition, we got the new super fancy Sparco Evo S bucket seat. Uh, I know this is supposed to be a daily. But I still wanted a bucket seat because I think my OEMC was actually kind of broken, so it was like shaking around. And we've got some new wheels actually, you can tell by the lip difference. There's a 15x7 versus the 15x8 at the front. Like a 15x8 has a little more pronounced extruded lip kind of look. Uh, but the 7s are a little bit more daily friendly. I put my old BFGs on the back and on the front for the 8s. 15x8s, I've got some 205 Kumo V730s. Uh, I was supposed to do the track tire, but I'm running this on the front this weekend just uh, to deal with it. The brakes, I had the FC RX-7 BBK. It was running some Hawk Endurance pads. I've switched to like a HPS. This car had so much freaking front bite that as soon as you look at the brake pedal, it will lock up in the front. So the HPS hopefully balances out a little bit and I can use the brake pedal a little bit more. Uh, still got the anti-gravity. I, I put in the new anti-gravity battery, uh, which meant the car actually starts beautifully now. Not too much. I think just a little bit of a tightening up, uh, fixing pieces here and there. But eventually, once you get some extra work done to it, I think next step we're looking at are probably valve springs. Once you get the get the thing to be able to rev freely past seven and a half, uh, I think it's maybe getting some valve float uh, at that moment. So that's kind of where we're at. But fairly happy, and we're gonna get to play. And if I break it, I'll fix it. It is not alarming at all that Pico, who was working on this thing just before it came, told me, "Yeah, this is a ticking time bomb." What could possibly? Oh, no, no, I'm not gonna say that. All right. I'm gonna start the day with some skip hats. Cause it is probably good to see if the car actually works. Low power as expected. I need more tire pressure at the back, I think. <laughs> But they can't keep the wheels spinning. <laughs> I realized 39 PSI at the back isn't quite enough, so I've gone all the way up to 44, which is supposedly what those BFG Sport Comp 2 is the maximum pressure they can take. I think skip pad is enough for me. The car is like so out of its power range that I can't spin the wheels. So I'm gonna try the actual intermediate course. Uh, I got approval for it. I'm gonna go see if I can do it. Uh, like, first couple will be siding laps and then really trying to see if we can get some sideways in the going, right? All right, actual big course, trying it out, see how it goes, let's go. How you doing, bruv? Coach me later, I have no idea what I'm doing. I'm, I'll just watch you, see what you're doing. All right. I'll let you know. Thank <laughs> you. 
messing with a car and fucking with a setup. I'd like to think I actually got the car pretty set up for drifting, holy shit. <laughs> and I've never really drifted this car before, so this is the very first time that it's gone to like a legit drift event and it's like doing seriously awesome. You can just throw the wheel and it will go to the angle you want, you step on the gas and just hose it. Oh man, this thing is so good. I don't know anything about setup, you know that, you guys know this. And Alex does all the setup on the Supra, I just... I finagled whatever on this and look it did freaking awesome out on that little course the only thing you know if I, I can't get enough exit speed out of the second one maybe if I hold a little less angle through the first and second I can carry it through but then you guys will see more well we'll let it cool off a little bit and I'll keep going maybe uh, maybe even they'll let us on the advanced course eventually uh, who knows but yeah uh, key point is to not break the car uh, don't break the car so good though oh my god Later that day.
That's hard. That's hard. Jump trips over there. 
<laughs> Pretty good, huh? What a day. Uh, shut it down like 20 minutes early because I started hearing the engine doing some funky things. I think it's just an engine code. Incredible that this, you know, piece of piece of labor and love. I'm not gonna call it a piece of shit. Piece of labor and love actually survived mostly. Uh, considering some of the corners you saw, second gear, full commitment, 8,000 all the way to red line, pegged, you know? It, she's awesome. She's awesome for even surviving. For a car that's never been set up to do this, you know, because I only built, I built this thing with random parts off the shelf, like, oh, I, I like this, I'll buy, I'll buy that. I had no mechanical knowledge of it, really, and to have a product that's as good as that. And people were, you know, the other 86 boys were asking me, Yo, what's the setup on this car? What's the engine? Like, how's the engine setup? Oh, your, your, your final drive feels different. I don't know what's even in the, in the final drive, you know? This car is just so awesome to me. So, yeah, well, you got, you got big red and baby red. <laughs> the size comparison is quite hilarious, but. Yeah, I've absolutely loved my time with Club FR. Thank you for John Kim. Thank you for all the boys uh, for inviting me out uh, and also provided pizza as well. Uh, that was very nice of them. This might be the most, most fun day I've ever had in a car ever. It's very up there. It's so up there because, you know, obviously I come out alone a little bit. So Alex wasn't here to support me. I didn't have the boys to support me, but to just, just a, it's a self-discovery process, you know, making new friends, making, meeting new people and learning new, new skills and techniques. This is all me, this is all what I wanted to learn, what I wanted to do, what I wanted to feel from the heart, you know? And what I learned, eight sixes are amazing and I will never, ever, ever sell this car, ever. Mark my fucking word. I will only entertain selling this thing for $100,000. Thank you all so much for watching and uh, stay tuned, stay tuned. I'm gonna do my 86 stuff, but you just know I am. See you all in the next one. Bye!